Good afternoon. Nice to see everybody here in the Lord's house today. Uh, as you came into church, hope you noticed that incredible smell of Swedish meatballs cooking. So uh, please join us uh, after church uh, for that uh, meal. Guided to the Cross is our series uh, this Lenten season. Uh, tonight, we're guided to peace. So we're going to learn a little bit more uh, about the peace that comes from God. Um, our passage for this evening is Colossians 1, 19 and 20. It's up on the screen. We will speak those words together. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. We open then with our first hymn, Jesus, I Will Ponder Now. Blessings to all of you this evening. Let us stand together as we continue with our invocation and call to worship. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We live in a world where peace can be hard to find. We are surrounded by strife and quarrels. We are often filled with worry and fear. Jesus tells us, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Jesus, our Savior, we are troubled and worried by the strife around us. The world's peace depends on the absence of war and strife and trouble. The peace that Jesus brings to us is not like the world's peace. The peace of Jesus depends only on Jesus. The world's peace can be lost, but the peace that Jesus brings to us is ours forever. Jesus, our Savior, even in times of trouble or fear, grant us your peace. 
by God's grace, through faith in Jesus, we have peace even in the midst of trouble. Through faith in Jesus, we have peace with God through the forgiveness of our sins. It is the peace that Jesus won for us through his death on the cross and his triumphant resurrection. It is peace that we can share with others as we tell them of Jesus' love. Let us confess our sins to God and ask his forgiveness. God has had mercy on us. He sent his son Jesus, the Prince of Peace, to suffer and die for our sins to bring us peace with God and with one another. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, Lord and Savior, through the blood of your cross, you have brought us forgiveness for our sins and peace with God. When the circumstances of life and the dangers and concerns of the world around us threaten the peace that we have, help us to remember your promise that you will be with us always to the end of the age. Make us bold witnesses for you so that in the power of the Holy Spirit, others will come to know the peace that you alone can bring. Set your cross before us to guide us in the way of peace. Amen. May be seated for our next hymn, Now What These Hands Have Done. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 53. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. The epistle reading from Colossians chapter 1. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Let us stand together as we hear the words of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. 
Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. May be seated for our sermon hymn, Christ the Life of All the Living. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, tonight guided to the cross, guided to peace. Peace. Peace, peace it, it's hard to come by these days, right? We're so busy all the time, busy with one thing or another, busy enough to forget what day of the week it is, Surrounded by sounds, sounds of people all around us, at home, at work, at school. Any quiet moments? Those quiet moments seem to be instantly interrupted by our phones ringing, by a siren blaring, or a car honking its horn, or a text message on our phone, or some music playing. Our lack of peace. The lack of peace in our day may, may be one reason why meditation and no technology retreats are becoming more and more popular. Finding time for silence. Finding time for silence may be one way that, that we've been guided toward what the world thinks of peace. But we, as, as Christians, know there's, there's a deeper kind of peace that we are craving as human beings, right? This peace is with God. Because of the entrance of sin into the world in the Garden of Eden, right? Remember that story? <laughs> human beings have not had peace with God since. Right? Okay. That is, we, we haven't had a right relationship with with God because our sin cuts us off from God and does not make us one with him think about Adam and Eve right they were banished from perfection in the Garden of Eden when they sinned and how sin kept them at a distance from God how sin made their lives difficult you and I we are sons of Adam and daughters of Eve, and we have indeed been born sinful. 
Right? Remember back to your confirmation days, we call that original sin. In addition, each one of us has, has sinned in, in thought, word, and deed apart from original sin. And re remember, St. Paul tells us, for all, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's no getting around that fact. There's no sugarcoating it. There's no glossing it over. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're, we're sinners. God knows it. We know it. And there's no peace in that. That's why God declared a plan, right? A plan to save us all the way back in Genesis chapter 3. Verse 15, right? remember those words? I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you will crush, he will bruise your, he, you shall bruise his heel. God made it clear. He made it clear all the way back then after the first sin that he would send a savior, a savior born of a woman to reunite us to himself to crush the power of sin, death, and the devil, all in the process. And then for thousands of years, right, the prophets announced that a Savior would come. A Savior would come into the world just as God had promised. But the people throughout history would not listen. They, they tried to make peace with God. Right? They... They tried to build a tower to the skies to be like God, Tower of Babel, but that didn't work out. They followed other gods, other gods who did not have God's plan in mind for them. Those false gods did not save them. They tried to overpower other nations to save themselves from destruction, but as we know, in the process, they were overpowered by others. Then, into this broken world, into this divided world, God sent his son. Sent his son, Jesus, as a little baby, born of a woman, to take on our flesh and blood as a human being, fully God at the same time, right? He led that sinless life, and he and his father were one. And then Jesus spent his ministry, right, telling his disciples and anyone who would listen that he was the one who would bring the world peace. The story at the, the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth, right, he comes into the synagogue and, and he reads the scroll that day and he reads from the scroll of Isaiah, the Spirit of God is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then he rolls the scroll up, and he sits down and he said, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And I'm the one he was telling them. That's the one they're talking about. But the people didn't believe him, right? Remember what they did? They drove him out of town in anger. There seemed to be no peace. And then Jesus numerous times tells his disciples, the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. But they didn't listen. Or maybe they just weren't paying attention. Right? Remember, Peter even took him aside. No, Lord, far be it for you. This will never happen to you. And he didn't want that to happen to his master. And to be honest, we don't want it to happen to him either. But Jesus knows the mission. The mission to bring peace to the world. To bring peace between us sinners and God. 
And that peace must include the cross. He didn't turn away from his mission. And when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and the angry mob moved into that seemingly quiet place where he was praying, right? The disciples were sleeping. Remember, Jesus said, are you still sleeping? Are you taking your rest? Right? Wake up, it's the hour, the time has come, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Come on, let us go. My betrayer is at hand. And at Jesus' arrest, Peter again didn't want Jesus to go down this road of suffering. Right? He pulls out his sword and cuts off the ear of a servant. To which Jesus says, put, put the sword back. Those who take the sword will perish by the sword. Jesus bringing peace, even then, in the midst of turmoil. Even then, knowing what laid ahead in the coming hours. And ultimately, it was on the cross that the peace between us and God came. When the crucified Jesus breathed his last, the Bible tells us, And behold, the curtain of, temple, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, the tombs were opened. Many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. What do these verses tell us? Well, they tell us that because of Jesus' death on the cross, we now have access to the Father. We can approach him, approach him in the most holy of holies that the, the temple curtain has been torn. The barrier of death has been destroyed. You see, death no longer separates us from God. We have that new life in Christ, that new life which will soon be revealed to us more fully on Easter. When Jesus' tomb was opened and he himself rose from the dead. The cross, the cross has become a sign of peace. It's a sign of peace for us in our church today. We often make the sign of the cross to acknowledge Christ's presence in our worship. We make that sign on the cross of the forehead and the heart of a, of a child or anyone who is baptized to mark them, to mark them as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Make those signs at the beginning of the service, at the end when the benediction, right? The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Peace. When we share his peace, we're reminded of the words Jesus shortly before his crucifixion in the upper room. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Right? Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. There's great comfort in those words. There's great confidence in those words. And Jesus says later, and now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. He was talking about his, his suffering. He was talking about his passion and death. The peace that he leaves with us. Saying to his disciples, saying to you and to me, when you see me on the cross, remember what I said. Remember that what you are witnessing is bringing lasting, eternal peace. Peace. Peace that will connect you to God the Father always. So be guided to the cross. Be guided to his peace. And live in that peace. The peace as we interact with one another this Lenten season and, and every season. Indeed, the peace of God be with each and every one of you. 
Amen. And the peace of God, the peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Let us stand together as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. be seated now as we gather our offerings to the Lord. Let's stand together as we continue with our prayers. Lord Jesus, you suffered and died for our sins. And by your wounds, we have received healing from our sins and we have peace with God. During this Lenten season, as we follow your path to the cross, set your cross always before us to guide us in the way of peace. Jesus, Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, the cross that you carried to Golgotha was not known as an instrument of peace, but as a terrible instrument of death. Yet through your sacrifice, the cross has become for us a sign of love and peace. Through the blood you shed on the cross, God has reconciled all things to himself, making peace through the blood of your cross. Jesus, Prince of Peace. Of peace. Lord Jesus, the world around us is rarely at peace. 
And when it is, that worldly peace can be a fragile thing. We must deal with conflicts and quarrels, troubled times among our own friends and family members, and the threat and reality of war among nations. Yet you have promised that when we bring our fears and worries to you in prayer, you will guard our hearts and minds with your peace. Jesus, Prince of Peace. Hear our prayer, Prince of Peace. Lord Jesus, we pray for people who are suffering through illness, grief, and other difficult circumstances. Grant to them the peace that you alone can give. Comfort them through the promises of your word and give us opportunities to serve them and to share your love with them. Jesus, Prince of Peace. Lord Jesus, right now, each day, we have forgiveness and peace through faith in your name. We look forward to the day when we will live in your presence, where we will enjoy peace forever. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Jesus is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Now may the Lord of peace himself Give you a peace at all times and in all, every way. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Amen. Be seated for our closing hymn. In the cross of Christ I glory. 